Okay, so most of you have probably seen my video the other day that I titled Injured, where I was talking about my heel and how I pulled a muscle in the back of my heel. Um, I am happy to say that is healing up very well. I've done a lot of searching on the internet and learned some massage techniques and some stretching techniques that have really helped me go from using a walker to get around to actually being up around and walking again. Yes, it still hurts and it's going to take a little time before I can actually get back on the board and skate because at my age, I need to do this right to make sure that I can continue doing this. So the last thing I want to do is get back on there right away and then damage it permanently. But for the time being, it is coming along very well. I'm up walking around again, and about every 10 minutes, I get up and I stretch it, and I do these massage techniques, and it's really coming along great. So I'm so happy to say that it is healing up well. With that in mind, this obviously is not going to be a typical skater diet video because there's not going to be any skating in the video. But what I thought I would do is take this opportunity to answer some questions and give you guys some information about um, how I have handled this so far and maybe just some things that I've left out of some of my videos. These are going to be in no specific order. I just, I got a lot of things together here on the desk with me. And so I'm just going to kind of go through these and give you, uh, you know, some answers that maybe you're looking for. So the first thing I think we'll start with just because it's right here is what kind of pads do I use? Now, believe it or not, I just use these Tony Hawk birdhouse pads. I use these on my knees and on my elbows, and I also have the wrist guards. Those things are out in the car, and I'm not going to make a trip out there to get them, but you can see the knee pads here, and they are solid. A lot of people would say, no, you got to have like 187 or something like that, you know, something that's expensive, but I mean, I literally picked these up at Goodwill one day for like six bucks when I started back skating, and I thought, well, I'll use these temporarily till I get some really good ones. And, I mean, these things have saved me a hundred times, and they're, they're solid. You know, they're not cracked or anything. I can't even tell you how many times I've fallen on my knees. And uh, they protect me just as well as anything else would. So, especially starting out, I mean, look at Goodwill, man. Like I said, $6 for these. That included the knee pads, the elbow pads, and the, uh, the wrist protectors. Uh, someone asked me what kind of cameras do I use to film my vlogs and my skate videos. Um... One of them that I use is the camera I'm using right here, which is my iPhone 5S. I mean, this thing has an incredible camera on it. It's 1080p. It's just, it gets some really beautiful pictures. Just looking at myself in this one, it's a really good picture as it is. And when you go outside into the natural light, it's even better. So I'm not going to go out and spend like six grand on a Canon Mark IV or whatever it's called, you know, just so I can say I have the same kind of camera as some of these other high profile vloggers. I'm just not going to do this. The other camera I use, I always refer to it as my GoPro when I'm talking about it, just because that's kind of the disposable term, you know, anytime you blow your nose in a tissue, it becomes a Kleenex. So I always call this my GoPro, but what it actually is, is a Vivitar DVR 794HD. This is what it looks like. It was like $80 at Walmart. And it's a great little camera. I mean, I use this for almost every single one of my time lapse. And if you guys look back through my other videos, you'll see that these things are crystal clear. Again, it's 1080p quality. It's just, it's amazing. And this actually comes with a little case that you can take it underwater. And it comes with a lot of accessories, which I got this thing kind of taped up right now, but it comes with one of these. I've connected this to the door handle on the outside of my car door. But aside from that, one little thing that I like to use that uh, is kind of like a very well-kept secret, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people use it, is this. It's a giant twist tie. It's covered with rubber. It's like an industrial twist tie. People use these when they're cleaning their garages and they will twist together like their mop and broom handles and things like that. But this thing is the best money I've ever spent when it comes to making videos because you can take your camera, twist it around like this, and then you can connect this to anything. I mean, I use this to connect it to fences and trees and just anything I can find while I'm out there when I need to get a shot or a certain angle. Sometimes you need to get a shot like pointing down. And I mean, how are you supposed to set a camera so that it'll point down like that? But you find a tree or something, wrap it around just like that. 
and it holds it pointing in the exact direction you need it to. So these things, I don't even remember what I paid for them, but uh, it, worth every penny. And at the moment, those are the only two cameras I use. I have used other ones in the past, but at the moment, that's all I use. They serve the purpose. They, they do a great job, so that's what I'm sticking with for now. I also use a typical selfie stick. This is not the kind that has the button that you can uh, turn it on or whatever, but, um, you know, it's swivel and you can extend it or whatever you want to do. This is what I use when I'm filming my feet on the board or if I want to get a really cool shot of the, uh, of the wheels spinning while I'm skating. I'll just extend it out and I hold it down there and move it around and you get some really cool shots. You know, look back through those skater diet videos that I've made and you'll see what I mean. You can you can kind of pick out when I've used the selfie stick. Now, obviously, you're going to use it like this, too, and be like, hey! And I will use one of these along with this to make sure that the camera actually stays on it, especially if I'm using my iPhone, because the last thing I want to do is ruin my iPhone while I'm out skating. And I have fallen numerous times. I've hit pebbles and gone flying, and my camera goes flying and everything. But, uh, but this holds it into place like that, and you don't have to worry about it just falling off on the ground when you're skating. The next thing I'm going to answer is uh, about my boards. What kind of boards do I use now? One of the boards I use is one of my own from my own company, Era, and that is this deck right here. It's the Die This Way deck, and... Uh, I don't recall what the measurements are on this right offhand. If you want to see what those measurements are, you can go onto the website, airescapeboarding.com. And uh, if you actually want one of these decks, you can follow the skate shop link at the top of airescapeboarding.com, and it'll take you to my eBay page where I sell the stuff. And just in case anybody's wondering, the reason I use eBay right now to sell everything is because the shipping is calculated a lot better on there. When I was using the website, it seemed like it was overcharging people. So I took the skate shop off of there and I just put it all on eBay because eBay's system calculates the shipping to exactly what it'll cost to get it from me to you. This is just the typical, you know, popsicle shape that everybody skates nowadays. I have, what are these, independent Blackheart trucks which I absolutely love. I think they're so awesome. The wheels are Bones 100s. I believe the bearings in here are just like your generic Avex 7s. I have rails because I'm from the old school, so I will always put rails on my skateboards. But I can tell you that the reason I like rails is because, for one thing, it doesn't get your graphics all destroyed if you're rail sliding or something like that. And when you go in to do a rail slide, you slide on the rails, and it, you don't even really need the wax. So that's the first deck that I skate. And the other one I'm going to show you here is actually the one that I chose when I knew I was going to start skating again and I was huge. I was just, I was, you know, in the 300s, the higher 300s. And so I needed something that was going to be big. I needed something that I felt was going to be able to handle my weight and my size. And so I went with, uh, this is actually a reissue by Street Plant. That's Mike Vallely's brand. And this is a reissue of the Barnyard, the Two-Tail Barnyard that was originally put out by SMA, World Industries. This was apparently the first Two-Tail board that was put out. And the nose on this is kind of short compared to the tail. But uh, this is a really solid deck. I really love this thing. I skate it every single time I go out, and then I will switch over to my other board and kind of go back and forth. I have G-Bones on here. These are Red's Bearings, Independent 169 Trucks, and again, I have the white rails on there. I love rails. Um, I do have risers. On both of my decks, I use risers, and the reason I use risers is because they're rubber, they're soft, they give that extra protection when you're hitting the ground rather than just having the steel up against the wood. When you put a riser in there, it just gives it a little bit more cushion. Now something else I did do when I was setting this up in both of my decks, I like my trucks really tight, so I swapped out the bushings 
I put independent 100A bushings in here rather than the stock bushings because the stocks, no matter how much I tightened them, they still were a little soft. So yeah, I just went and I bought these uh, independent 100As. I think they were super hard. I think that's what they are. And uh, I mean, they were, you know, 10 bucks or something. And they're great. They do the job perfectly. But this deck here, I believe, is a nine and three quarter width. And it's a big deck and it handles the weight perfectly. Now the difference in the two decks besides the size, the era deck I'm skating is an eight, eight and a half I think it is. And like I said, the barnyard is about a nine and three quarters. So on the barnyard obviously you have, you know, just more space to stand. But as far as the way they're built and the way they handle, the Bones 100 wheels are small. The G-Bones wheels are big. The G-Bones wheels, these things, they can roll over anything. Now, if you hit a pebble, you're going to go flying. That doesn't matter. But these wheels are so big that you've seen like the concrete where it's kind of crumbling sometimes. If you've got a decent amount of speed going, these wheels will let you roll right over it. As opposed to the Bones 100s, which are small, they're more like skate park wheels. And if you're out on the street with those small wheels, the terrain you need to be on is like freshly paved terrain. I mean, if you're on rocky roads and that, you're just, it's just not going to work very good. I notice I definitely have to push harder and put a lot more effort in with the smaller wheels. I think that pretty much takes care of the hardware. Another thing I did want to talk about is my diet. Now, I kind of try to stay away from this because there are a lot of opinions out there about different kinds of diets. I use a low-carb diet. I have used a low-carb diet the entire time except for one month when I counted calories. I hate counting calories. I hate cutting my portions and limiting my portions. I'm just a big eater, naturally, and that's how it is. I have tried to cut those portions and I'm just starving to death every day, all day. Out of all the times that I have gone on diets and changed the way I eat, a low carb diet is the one that I've found that is easiest for me to actually stick with and follow the routine without cheating. Now a lot of people think that when you're on a low carb diet all you eat is meat and cheese and that could not be farther from the truth. I'm just going to show you some of the things I pulled out of the fridge here. And yes, I will say that a lot of it is meat, but that doesn't mean that that's all you get to eat. You get to be very creative. You get to make all, all kinds of awesome stuff. So let me show you some of these things. We got Jimmy Dean sausage. I eat a lot of bacon. More sausage. Eggs. I eat tons of eggs. Ground beef. Mixed peppers and onions. I'll use that and beefy onion soup mix to make meatloaf and hamburgers and meatballs. This Taco Bell hot sauce has zero carbs in the entire bottle. I use this for so many things. I'll use it when I make meatloaf and I use it when I make meatballs and I use it when I make enchiladas or tacos. Obviously anything Mexican. I will even make just a bowl of hamburger meat with cheese and that sauce. It is really good. I got jalapeno peppers here. I take my sausage and I crumble it and brown it and I'll mix it with some diced onions, cream cheese, and cheddar cheese. And then you slice these in half, wash them off, layer them with that sausage mix, and then stick them in the oven for like 20 minutes on 375. And when you take them out, they are so good. They're just absolutely delicious. And there's like next to no carbs in them. I also make big salads all the time. I cut up chicken, stir fry that and put it in the salads. And salads, I mean, you can have everything that goes into a salad. I use cauliflower to make a substitute for mashed potatoes. I make broccoli and cheese. I make regular pizza, taco pizza, soft tacos, enchiladas, all kinds of things. You can get really creative. I don't have any on hand right now, but there are these wraps, these flax wraps that I use. The brand is called Joseph's. A few ways I use those is that I cut them in four and I use them as soft taco wraps. I will use them to make my enchiladas, burritos. I cut them up into little triangles and bake them and it makes chips so you can make nachos. I even use them as pizza crust. I can make regular pizza on those, or taco pizza, or anything you want to make. Even chicken alfredo pizza. There are so many different kinds of things you can have on a low-carb diet that people don't understand. The things that you cannot have 
are starchy foods like pastas. You cannot have potatoes. You cannot have bread. And obviously you can't have candy and sweets. But that pretty much goes for any diet you could ever be on. I mean, I've never heard of a diet where you can sit around eating candy all day. And I drink water. I mean, tons of water. <sighs> yes, sometimes I will drink pop. It has to be diet pop. But that is the one thing that I allow myself that is, I guess, could be considered a sweet. Because if I start craving and I want candy or something, I just can't have that. So... I will go and I'll get a diet root beer or a diet cream soda or something like that, and it pretty much hits the spot every time. If you're absolutely dying for some ice cream and you just can't help it, you can get one of those containers of Cool Whip and stick it in the freezer for a little while and have a couple scoops of that. It's still low carbs. It's not the best thing for you, but it's better than a big tub of ice cream. Probably the biggest thing people don't understand about low-carb diets and the reason they think they are so bad is because they think that eating all the eggs and the meat and everything is raising your cholesterol and your blood pressure and they just think it is completely unhealthy. That couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, I stay away from drama. You know, so I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to get into trying to argue the point on whether it's healthy or not. But I will just tell you that in my own personal experience, my blood pressure went down. My cholesterol went way down. My weight has gone way down. I'm healthier than I ever have been. So really what it comes down to is what works for you. You just kind of have to test the waters and see what kind of a diet you can stick with and what really works for you. For me, it's a low carb diet. And I'm just trying to make sure I answer any questions you guys might have about it. As far as how many carbs do I have a day, I keep it below 20 per day. Now there are days when I make like the meatloaf. I'll use one pack of this for about a pound and a half to two pounds of hamburger. And sometimes, honestly, I will eat the whole thing in one sitting, and that is about 40 carbs. But I've been doing this for so long that really if I have 40 carbs in one day, it doesn't affect me very much at all. I think I had meatloaf like three days in a row right before my 299 weigh in. So you can see that it doesn't hurt me. <laughs> and the one thing that I use as far as anything to help me along with this is HydroxyCut. HydroxyCut Hardcore to be exact. I take four of these a day, it's two per dose, and I mean you have to start out small with these. You have to start out taking one at a time because these things make you hyper, and I'm already hyper, so you can imagine how crazy I drive everyone around me. I'll take these in the evening when I'm staying at my girlfriend's house, and in about ten minutes the TV goes off and I'm sitting there yip, 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 yip driving her crazy. <laughs> But people are probably going to tell me how unhealthy and how bad they are for me. And I've probably gone through about 10 bottles of these um, over the last 100 pounds. But it works for me. It has not affected me adversely in any way, shape, or form that I am aware of. And so I will continue to take them. You know, like I said, I've lost 100 pounds doing this stuff. So anybody who wants to argue what I'm doing... Keep it to yourself, basically. <laughs> you know, as long as it's working and I'm losing the weight, I'm not going to change what I'm doing. So that doesn't mean that I'm against receiving advice. Please feel free to give me advice if you want to. But, you know, just don't be offended if I don't change the way that I'm doing things now because it is factually working. Okay, you may notice the background shifted a little bit here because I finished up the video and I took the camera down and then I remembered that I did not add this part. I wanted to make sure that I also covered in here my progression in skating from the day I started back skating to now. Let me first say that as far as exercise goes, once in a while I will use the treadmill and once in a while I will walk at the park. I get a lot of exercise from doing my daily vlogs because I'm always walking to a billion different places around abandoned areas and just out exploring and I will walk a half a mile to get a certain shot of traffic or clouds or something like that if I have to. So I actually do get a good amount of exercise while I'm out filming my regular vlogs and just walking. But as far as weightlifting or you know using the treadmill or anything like that, I just don't do it very often. Not even enough to say that I do it. All my exercise comes from walking around when I'm vlogging and skateboarding. When I first started back skateboarding, as you know, I was in the mid-300s. I was huge. 
um, and I had not stepped on a skateboard in probably at least 10 years, and that was only because my kids had one, and it had been 22, 23 years or something like that since I actually rode a skateboard. The first time I stepped back on the skateboard, my legs felt like jelly. I mean, it was just, it was crazy because I had this in my mind where I was going to toss down the board, jump on it, and go, and it did not happen. So if you're looking to get back into skating, this is kind of what you can expect. I stepped on it. My legs were just like jelly. I felt like I was going to just slam down as hard as you could, like the board was going to fly out from underneath me, and it pretty much did. In one of my videos, you'll see where there's like the double wave kind of thing at the one skate park. I think it's Skater Diet number 35 that I actually conquered those the other day. But one of the first times I was out skating, I went to that park and I thought, well, I'll try this. And I skated up to that. And I think I even say this in that video that the board went flying out from underneath me. I slammed. I killed my elbow and my knees and my back. And it flew up in the air over the fence behind this ramp. And that was only one of the falls that day. <laughs> so it was pretty bad when I first started out. That doesn't mean it's going to be bad for everybody. It just, that's, that's what it was. You totally lose what it feels like to be on a piece of wood with four greased wheels. It's crazy. I was really, really nervous going out every time for a long time. For one thing, you're worried that you're going to run into people there and you're going to look like an idiot. I don't think there's a person on the face of the earth who wouldn't feel like that. But especially being a middle-aged fat guy, that it's really prevalent. You know, you really do feel like, oh man, I'm going to run into people. They're going to think I'm stupid. You know, they're going to see me fall. And I ran into a few people, but you kind of just got to bite the bullet and go talk to them and tell them, you know, look, I'm a big fat guy trying to lose weight. I'm skating again after 20 years. and da -da. You know, just tell them your story and they're pretty cool with it. And actually, I have a lot of those people contact me on a regular basis now asking me to come skate with them. For a long time, I would pull up to the skate parks or wherever I was going to skate and just the thought of getting on the board was made me so nervous and so anxious because you just, you know, you're not stable on there. And it, you're not to that point yet where it feels good, but you do eventually get there. I mean, it, it takes a little while, but you get there. The more you push and the more you just cruise around and feel that wind blowing on you, it feels so good. And you just feel like, oh my God, you know, this is what I've been missing. This is great. And you want to get better and you want to progress and you want to go out there more often. And it becomes less important to you who sees you skating and what they think of you. And you just get to the point where you're just like, let's go skate. And you get out there and you do it and you enjoy yourself. I did not start trying to do any kind of tricks whatsoever for a few months in. Again, if you look back through my videos, you can see the progression from the beginning to now. And uh, there's a couple videos when I started trying to do ollies. I started doing them in one place on a walking track that was all rocky so I knew the board wasn't going to fly out from under me and I went from there to the tennis court was really smooth and then I finally worked in doing my ollies while I'm rolling and it was a long process it really was you're not just going to jump on the board and do it as much as you think you are and as much as you wish you could it unfortunately just doesn't happen that way, at least it didn't for me. I'm really right now still trying to perfect those rolling ollies. And I'm looking forward and I'm saying, man, I can't wait to do kick flips and shove it. And, you know, I just, for some reason, one of my favorite tricks ever to do was an ollie late shove it. And I just, I can't wait to do it. But the progression, it does come, it just comes kind of slow. And you have to take it slow. Because, especially if you're an older guy... Remember, you can have a heart attack out there. <laughs> you can break a hip and be in a nursing home tomorrow. I mean, I've seen it happen. I used to work in the medical field for 15 years, and I saw this stuff happen on a daily basis. People who are up walking around and running marathons one day, they fall and break a hip, and they're in the nursing home for two months. You gotta be careful. You gotta take it easy. You know, if you, if you haven't seen my most recent skater diets, go back and watch them, and you can see exactly where I'm at right now. I'm starting to hit the platforms and the pyramids and the waves and whatever else you want to call them at the skate parks and the transitions, and I'm getting better and I'm enjoying it more, and it's becoming more comfortable 
to hit those ramps. So I hope I have answered all, if not a good handful of the questions that have been coming my way on these videos. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to toss them out. I will answer those the best I can for you. And uh, otherwise, here's looking towards the next skater diet. Hopefully my heel will be completely healed up and I'll be ready to skate here within the next week. That's really what I'm hoping for. So I will talk to you guys later. Peace. Era.